Hey there everyone, this is Michael Dugo, the Nootropic Reviewer, and during this video you're going to learn about some of the alternatives to using Kratom as a nootropic supplement. People feel very different effects when they use Kratom, some people feel motivated, some people feel calmer. From my experience in using it, I really feel it's somewhat overrated, specifically because of the many side effects that are associated with Kratom use. So what it actually is, is a tropical evergreen tree that's in the coffee family that's native to Southeast Asia. The actual Kratom leaves can be consumed, but how it's most commonly consumed in today's age as a nootropic supplement specifically is the extract. And these are dosages ranging from 2 grams to 5 grams per day. Not that I recommend it. People could actually take a high enough dose of Kratom and actually feel benefits that are somewhat euphoric and being in that better mood which can make it of course horribly addictive. And while there's a lot of people using Kratom specifically for productivity and for improving concentration, it's actually most commonly going to be used and marketed as a product which can help with pain, anxiety, and even just feeling better. And I I really think that's one of the reasons why it became so popular over the past five years. It's that people see Kratom as a nootropic supplement, which is very unique in that it's somewhat seen as like a pain reliever. In my experience using it, perhaps I felt like a slight mood uplift. I didn't feel more productive. I actually felt very similar to uh, how I felt when I used Phenibut. When I use Phenibut, I feel very relaxed. Of course, it drops anxiety, actually helps me with sleep a little bit. I've talked about Phenibut in this video over here, and I do feel that they are somewhat similar. Now, with respect to the side effects, while it's very easy to find anecdotes about people sharing negative experiences using Kratom. And I know this may sound fairly obvious, but it seems like the more Kratom you take, the worse the side effects are going to be. And so for a lot of people, the major issue is that they get some sort of benefit with Kratom, but then what happens is they easily build a tolerance to it because if they use one gram a day, Eventually, the following week, they're not going to get the same benefit using that one gram. So they have to increase the serving size. And according to this paper over here, most people using this herb do not experience adverse health effects associated with Kratom use. And that the side effects that were observed were gastrointestinal symptoms and agitation. Although to give you a better understanding of the negative side effects that come along with Kratom use, there's actually a whole subreddit that's dedicated towards quitting Kratom. Not only is there a whole subreddit, there's 40,000 members there that are all in alignment within this community that are trying to get off of Kratom. And what I've learned from looking at many of the anecdotes is some of the common symptoms associated with Kratom use are going to be nausea, irritability, inconsistent energy levels. And so hopefully some of the nootropics that I discuss in this video may be helpful for you. Of course, make sure that you speak with your general practitioner, ask them their opinion before introducing any new supplement to your stack. And while I don't feel like these are good alternatives, they definitely are alternatives as far as feeling the same way if you were to take time off of Kratom. And the first one would be Phenibut. You'd of course be taking Phenibut in a much smaller dose if you were to take it. And I hate to say it, but really from using so many nootropics, I've learned like the effects of Phenibut for me are very similar to Kratom in that I get the decreased levels of anxiety. I feel a little bit more alert, a little bit more happy. However, this is probably the worst alternative because then you're having the same issue most likely as you're having with Kratom in the sense that Phenibut is similarly very hard to get off of. And those uses of Phenibut range like say 50 milligrams up to 500 milligrams per day. People even often take one gram per day. People notice they get better sleep when they use it. I use Phenibut maybe two or three times a month really if I want to have a better sleep. Maybe if I'm feeling overly anxious and I want to try something just to calm me down. I don't really recommend it. I don't think it's needed. I really don't think that it helps with productivity. I see it more like kind of a fun supplement to take. I also do like the fact that it to some extent blunts my appetite. There's some users of Phenibut that report ingesting it once and following that they actually get two good nights worth of sleep. And I don't have that experience. Maybe I'll have one good night of sleep. However, it is a pretty good strong substance. But to think it's that effective, not only can it impact your sleep that night, but the following night, that's pretty crazy. The second alternative to Kratom use would be using Bromantane. Bromantane, I wouldn't say the benefits are as strong. However, fortunately, the side effects also aren't that strong either. Most people are using Bromantane specifically to help them replenish their dopamine stores and help them to actually increase dopamine levels throughout the day. Dopamine is a very important neurotransmitter when it comes to reward, achieving goals, motivation, feeling focused. And so people who have lower levels of dopamine often report feeling like they have no motivation, like they're tired. But there's a lot to understand about dopamine. There's some research showing that uh, the ingestion of caffeine can actually make it easier for you to have higher dopamine levels throughout the day. And I've talked more about how to increase your dopamine levels during this video over here. And one simple way you can do this is by eating more protein, believe it or not. So what does this have to do with Kratom and Bromantane? It's that often when people get off Kratom, they feel demotivated and they're able to use Bromantane as somewhat of a substitute. So they can take about 100 milligrams of Bromantane. They feel increased motivation levels throughout the whole day. I'm somebody who's used Bromantane for several 
several months in the past, I didn't find it all that effective, but there was a slight benefit to its use. The third alternative to consider rather than using Kratom would be using L-theanine. L-theanine is actually gonna help you more so if you're somebody that gets like the calming benefits associated with Kratom use. So for like I mentioned with Kratom, some people feel motivated, some people feel a bit more tired, but they also feel more at peace and they have lower levels of anxiety. And that's where L-theanine can really help. I don't see L-theanine as something that can like boost focus or boost productivity, but sometimes by making yourself calmer, you're able to concentrate better and thus be more productive. And theanine is naturally occurring. It's found in tea, specifically in green tea. However, you would have to have uh, probably over five cups of green tea in order for you to actually get a decent serving of L-theanine. So what people do often suggest is ingesting uh, 200 milligrams of L-theanine once or twice a day. And that's going to get them the benefits that they want as far as feeling calmer, uh, dropping anxiety levels. Often people are actually using L-theanine along with caffeine because there's research and a lot of anecdotes suggesting that when you have caffeine along with L-theanine, L-theanine can actually help to remove some of those negative side effects that are associated with caffeine. And I've talked more about caffeine and L-theanine in this video over here. And while L-theanine is seen as a fairly safe supplement, something that I dislike about it is that I feel its effects are somewhat inconsistent. And what I mean by that is that I really enjoy using a nootropic and understand how I'm going to feel, think, and perform afterwards. So with L-theanine, sometimes I ingest it, I feel great the following two hours. However, sometimes I'll ingest L-theanine and it's followed by like an energy crash or I'll feel fatigued or I'll feel demotivated. And so for me, that's one of the reasons why I don't use L-theanine as commonly as some people do. I want to again remind you that the effects of nootropics are going to be highly variable across different individuals. As shown in this paper, L-theanine, an amino acid in tea with multiple health benefits and food applications. Unfortunately, it's described to being a neuroprotective, having anti-inflammatory effects, it being liver and kidney protective, as well as helping with anti-obesity. And I have found that L-theanine use, especially if you were to drink it in tea, certainly does blunt your appetite. And surprisingly, there's some research suggesting that it can actually make it easier to lose fat by getting fat out of the fat cells into the bloodstream and more easily able to be burned. And then the fourth potential alternative to using Kratom would be using lemon balm extract. Lemon balm extract, I actually use it prior to sleeping, so I really enjoy that it calms me down. However, I don't think it's overall that effective. Uh, common serving sizes are between 100 to 150 milligrams. I get the form from Nootropics Depot. I really enjoy it. I've been using it almost two years now. And while it allows me to get to bed a lot easier, it also does help me feel a bit more relaxed. It helps me to uh, calm myself down a little bit, make sure that my judgment is not impaired. Let's say if I've taken too many stimulants, for example. So I see it as like a nice, good, uh, versatile nootropic, and it's definitely more predictable than using something like L-theanine. Meaning when I ingest lemon balm extract, and most people can report the same thing, we know how we're going to respond to it afterwards. And then a couple appropriate alternatives that are worth mentioning would be kava. Kava being one of the best things you can actually take to decrease levels of anxiety. And the other one is GABA. GABA, most people actually ingest before sleeping and it does help them reduce anxiety levels a little bit, be more calmer, and in some cases, improve your mood. But what are your thoughts on Kratom? I wanna see it in the description box below. Make sure to subscribe, drop a like if you did get value from this video. And if you'd like to speak with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can book a time to speak with me via Patreon and be sure to visit our Discord server. It has a 24 seven chat room. We're answering questions in a time sensitive fashion. I thank you for your interest in nootropics and I look forward to seeing you next time.